Hey folks, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, March 1, 2018. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. It was a pretty wild day out here today in the markets, so I've got a lot to discuss and I want to do a couple of things that should give you an idea of the way in which I determine where support and on the flip side resistance would necessarily be on a day like today. So there's some good stuff out here. So let's get right into the action. So we had another hard sell today for the most part. We didn't finish near the lows, but we had a nice down day once again. The S&P finished down 36 points. The transports were down 51 the broker-dealers were down, the industrials, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 420 points, the NASDAQ was down 92, all markets were down more earlier in the session, but we finished off the lows. Interestingly enough, today marked the third down day in a row of almost equidistant to each other. I think that's important, that plays into my discussion about market symmetry. That's found in my course, and traders that have taken the course understand that I like to lean on market symmetry because it gives us a good idea of A, where markets are going, and B, when they've gotten there and they're likely to turn around. Now, we're not at the point yet where we're saying the market's going to turn around, but I'll get to more of that as the video goes on because I have a whole list here of things that we need to discuss. So let's put the pieces to the get together, and then once we put the pieces up on the table, you'll see how the puzzle begins to come together and what I'm thinking. So let's just go back one day and talk about the level that was important yesterday, the price level of 271.25. That's pretty much where the market stopped short yesterday afternoon and... That also marked a former breakout area. So there was a chance that we would have seen the market find some stability right in this zone and, again, make another push higher. But that's not what happened, okay? So that is what it is, and the market has a job to do. The market's always going to do the unexpected the majority of the time, especially when volatility picks up like it has. So then what we discussed last night is, and we always talk about both sides of the market because that's fair, so what we discussed was if the market was getting below this level of these you know, low pivot areas here, then the likely story is we were going to go down and at least test this uh, low of this green candle, this break up candle, if you will. That's an important candle because that's the candle where we got above this red candle high. And that told us that higher prices were coming in the market back when it actually happened. So if the market comes down any further, we're going to see, at least from an intraday perspective, the market finds support at that green candle low. But that's not today. Today the market found support at the 100-day moving average. Now let's discuss, and that's where my green line is at 265.92. The 265.92 is not necessarily the 100-day moving average. The 265.92 represents a retracement using this pivot low and this pivot high, okay? And if we use the recent pivot low and the recent pivot high, this marks a 50% retracement. Again, anybody that's taken my course at lazyeminitrader.com understands why that's important. But it's not only important in and of itself, it's also important because you also had another item of importance, which is the 100-day moving average. The 100-period moving average came in at 266.17. Let me move the chart over, and we'll take a look at where the low came in today. So the low came in at 266 even. In my course, I talk about even numbers and how they're important and how markets like to be attracted to and normally will spike through even numbers. However, they're still attracted to even numbers, whether it be on the downside or the upside. Some numbers are important than others. I'll leave that information for those that have taken the course. But you had three things that were all converging basically at the same time today. So you had a 50% retracement that came in at 266 Pardon me, 265.92. You had the 100-day moving average that came in at 266.17. So that's within a stone's throw. And you also had the even number at 266. 
So those three things combined, you had a low today of 266, the 100-day moving average at 66.17, and then below that, you had the 265.92. That was the 50% retracement. You can begin to see what happened. The market basically, not to the penny, but pretty close, split the difference between the 50% retracement and the 100-day moving average. Just so happens that the even number of 266 was right in that zone. That's where the market stopped short and had a reversal intraday. Now, it may sound like a lot of information all at once, and it is a lot of information all at once, but when you pick it apart and you pull it piece by piece away from each other, you can start to see that the more reasons you have for the market to find support or resistance, if it's on the other side, if it's on the upside, the more reasons you have, the more likely you are to be correct. It's not any more complicated than that. Of course, nothing works 100% of the time, but when you have three things working in your favor, an even number, a 100 period moving average, and a 50% retracement from the recent pivot low, which was important to the recent pivot high, which we also identified at 278.80, the high was just a penny or two above that, the high was 278.92, pardon me, 12 cents above that. So we had a recent high that was important, we knew that ahead of time. We had a 50% retracement of the low to high. We had the moving average. We had the even number. That told you, or it should tell you, that at a bare minimum, that's good for a tradable opportunity. And again, I hate to harp on this, but all these things are discussed in detail in the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader. Everything I discuss in here is how I look at, analyze, and trade in the markets. So while in these videos, you're not getting everything I have, you pretty much get everything I have in the course. And what I'll remind you is, there are no secrets out here. There's no wizardry going on. There's, in terms of secrets, there's just things that we just don't know yet. There's things that we haven't been exposed to yet. There's no secrets out here. Now, we'll do another little uh, look at the 10-minute chart. And there's a reason why I want to look at this. We had the low that was made this afternoon right around the 100 or the 266 area, the 100 day moving average was right here. That's the low that we're talking about. So we make a low and we begin to rally off that low. So we have two up candles, a pullback, and then a further push to the upside. So on one hand, you can say, here's a little mini A, B, C. Okay, that was an ABC move or a zigzag pattern as they're like to be called. That's somewhat on the micro scale. Then you can take it up a notch and look at it, not necessarily on a micro scale, but certainly not macro. And you say, well, here's another, you know, leg up on a bigger scale. Here's a leg down. And we're in the midst. We ran out of time today, but we're in the midst of another leg up that should complete above the high of the A leg. So there's another ABC or zigzag pattern. Why do I show this all the time? Because these happen all the time. I want you to realize them all the time. They happen on all charts all the time. It's the way the market trades. And what really happens is, and this is really fascinating, what happens is people are scared to get in at the lows. Okay, They want to make a trade, but they're scared to buy at the lows. They don't have a reason like we just discussed before. They don't really know where the low is going to be. But once they see the market turn around and start to rally... They're not buying it in here, okay? They're buying it up here because they think that the low's been put in and they don't want to miss the rally. It's called FOMO, fear of missing out. And then what happens? They buy in and all of a sudden within a few pennies, a few ticks, a few points, whatever it is, whatever it is you're trading, the market all of a sudden pretty immediately turns around and begins heading downward. And as it's heading downward, the person that bought near the highs thinks they were wrong, and they end up selling somewhere in here near the low. That's how traders get whipped out, and these are amateur traders. These are retail traders. This is how they get whipped out of the market all the time. And they get whipped out of the market all the time is because they don't know what to expect. Now, just because I might expect certain things to happen doesn't mean they happen all the time, but they happen a large majority of the time. And then the market finds a low, and it turns around again, and it begins going up in the other direction, but that trader has already been whipped out of the trade once or twice, and he probably gives up, pounds his fist on the table a few times, say, I can't do it, it's ridiculous, 
this isn't for me, and one by one, if they don't learn the proper way that the market works, they give up one by one by one by one. And it's unfortunate because really anybody can learn how to do this. You just have to have the information, you have to have the knowledge, and you have to have the desire and the discipline to want to do this correctly. This is not a guessing game. It's far from a guessing game. But most people that begin trading in the markets, and they don't necessarily realize they're doing this, but they turn it into a guessing game. They're really just guessing at entries, guessing at exits. They're moving their stops around. And unfortunately, they lose most of the time. And I hate to see it, which is a large reason why I do what I do. All right, no more soapbox. We're going back to the daily chart real quick. So just to recap, unless or if there is more downside coming in this market, for example, tomorrow, the important level that we have to watch out for, and there will be intraday support right around here, even if it's a few pennies lower, there will be intraday support somewhere in this neighborhood right down here. So you're, you're going to look for a bounce around that, this area unless we're getting you know, some kind of hard sell for some kind of exogenous event. But there should be support in here, and the reason is because if the market closes the day below these levels, below this black, these two black lines, for example, all right, then the likely story is that we're going to start heading down back to the 200 period moving average. It won't exactly be at double bottom, which is down here, but we're going to head towards that area. And there's a chance that if we don't hold this area, then there's a chance that we can actually break the lows. But I'm not ready to say that just yet. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure that's going to be the case. I think this, if I look at this objectively, I think, and, and we'll, we'll find out in the days to come, right? But I think that what we really have here is an ABC, right? That's possible. I'm not suggesting we have to make new highs anytime soon. And we don't even have to complete the C leg, but... This could be just a pullback in, in the big scheme of things. So we'll see. I'm not ready to say it's going to be another hard sell. And by the way, I understand all the reasons why and the reasons the media was giving for the sell-off. And I want to just point out that they're nonsense, right? Number one, part of the reasoning was that we p could potentially be opening up a can of worms to a trade war. Uh, Trump administration put a tariff on steel and all that stuff. That's not new information. That's... Today's not the first time we heard about that, but the market was down and that was, uh, you know, I guess made official. And so therefore they assigned that as the reason. But let me show you something. Here's U.S. Steel. So U.S. Steel was up over 5% today, almost 6%, two and a half bucks. So why is it up? It's up because they're going to benefit from any kind of a tariff on foreign imports of steel into the U.S. We knew about this already. Why do you think U.S. Steel was all the way up in this zone to begin with because of the talk about a tariff on steel. And what was this? Check it out. We had an up move, bullish sideways consolidation, and then another up move starting today. That happens over and over and over again. It doesn't matter whether we're looking at U.S. steel, the SPY chart, the NASDAQ market, gold futures. It makes no difference. All charts act and react the same way. Here's another item that's important. I don't know if it will be important, but it can be important. And don't look at me like I have a tinfoil hat on my head, but tomorrow night is a full moon. A lot of times, a full moon can have an impact on a market, just like eclipses and other astrological events. You don't have to believe in that. You don't have to believe me about the full moon. It doesn't really matter. What the point is, is that Markets can have a trend change following a full moon. Now, the full moon doesn't take place until tomorrow evening, I believe, um, or actually I stand corrected. It's tonight, I think around 8.50, something like that in the evening, Eastern Standard Time. So following that, and it doesn't have to be immediately following, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, doesn't have to be in the futures overnight, but somewhere following the full moon, we're likely to see a trend change, especially since We've been trading down into a full moon. If we were trading up into a full moon, I might be expecting somewhat of a corrective move. Since we've been trading down pretty hard into a full moon, I won't be surprised to see a reversal in the markets, even beginning tomorrow, but certainly won't be surprised to see it come next week. 
All right, let's go over to the IWM because something else was a tip-off today. And what was interesting was the IWM as a whole was not as weak as the spider was. In fact, the SPY finished down 1.36%. The S&P 500, roughly the same. The IWM finished down uh, 0.47 tenths of a percent, almost half a percent. And it was certainly not leading the market on the downside. When you look at the 10-minute chart, for example, here's the intraday chart of the IWM. Now pay attention to this, and then I'm going to flip it over to the spider chart. So we have the low that was made here, okay, and then here's the low from this afternoon. Now, what happens when I flip over to a spider chart? You can see a different magnitude of the sell-off from today. Look where the low is in the morning session, okay? And then here's the low in the afternoon. Quite a differential between the two lows. And the IWM was not selling off as hard as the spider was. It had relative strength against the spider. That was interesting information. And you know what else? The transports had much of the same action. So my two favorite market leading indicators on the up and the down side were telling me that the selling pressure wasn't necessarily across the board and my two market leading indicators were not selling and were not pacing the rest of the market. That was another telltale sign that we were going to find a low and that you put together with the 100 day moving average, the even number on the spider, the 50% retracement. You put that together with the fact that my favorite market leading indicators were not having a hard sell and that was just a buy with both hands type of scenario. When we look at the transports on the daily chart, you can see here we're resting right on the 100 day moving average. That 100-day moving average isn't as important as it would be had we not visited it in quite some time. But we've been around this 100-day moving average for quite a while now. So it's not really as important as you might think. What I do think is important in the big picture back on the IWM is the fact that we're below all the moving averages except the 200. So that's sign of weakness all in all. You know, what I talk about from an intraday perspective, and now I'm talking about the daily chart, those are two different things. So from a daily chart perspective, there's weakness in the IWM. So I don't want to give you the wrong impression that the market made a long-term low today and we're going to rally up to new highs. That's not what I'm saying, and that's not the impression that I intend to give. This market is not out of the woods. We may have a short-term bottom. We may rally for a couple of weeks. But I'm not suggesting that we're going to, you know, resume the bull market, make new highs and continue higher for another 10 or 20 percent from this point forward. That's not the impression that I want to give. Volatility is here. And in 2018, it's here to stay, at least from where I sit. The important level on the downside right now in the IWM is the corresponding level that we talked about in the spider chart. You close below this level here, even though you have a 200-day moving average uh, up right beneath that. Maybe it's a little bit of a safety net for a short period of time. But that's going to at least be the first indication that it's going to want to go back and test the old lows, or at least close to the old lows. So that's the downside. The upside of it is that we may have found a short-term low today. We'll see what tomorrow brings. All right, switching gears and going over to the gold market. Here's a chart of gold futures. You can see what happened today. Pretty interesting. We came down and spiked through the 100-day moving average, making a low of about 1305, I believe. The low was 1303 spot 60, and we had a nice big rally off that level. So when you look at this, it, again, it's, it's hard to see unless you're really looking for it, but it's another symmetrical move. So we had, without the bearish consolidation, only had one day or, you know, of sideways activity. But we had, you know, this pattern that played out here, bearish pattern, played out to the downside. Then we had another shimmy uh, over to the side and then another like move to the downside, very similar to the prior two moves. So we were making kind of a ladder on the way down. But that 100-day moving average could be support, could be supportive, I should say, of the market for a while, that's a nice tail candle. I always like to see tail candles, and they're more meaningful to me at lows and highs on charts. This tail candle happens to come in in the middle of a range. That's not as meaningful to me in the middle of a range as a tail candle at a high on a chart or a low on a chart. 
if we see a tail candle down here or a tail candle up here, that's got more meaning to me than one right in the middle of a range in between, you know, a high and a low. However, a spike of the 100-day moving average finishing closer to the highs certainly than we are even to the middle or the lows, and a big nice tail candle, and, you know, almost down to the 1300 area, that may be good for several days of upward activity in the gold market. Now, technically speaking, we were talking about a bullish pattern that was broken once we closed below that level. That still is the case. That bullish pattern's off the table, but that doesn't mean that we can't go higher, sideways to higher for a few days in the gold market off the low that you know may have been made today from that level of a spike through the 100-day moving average. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm unsure about where we go from here in the gold market, to be frank with you. So when I'm unsure, there's no trade for me and there hasn't been a trade in the gold market. I've been saying in the middle of a range, it's very, very difficult. There was no high probability trade in the gold market over the last several sessions. And when there's no high probability trade, what we do is we leave our money in our pocket and we look on other charts for high probability trades. That's where you make money, high probability trades. Now here's the crude oil market. Now I wanna bring something important to our attention here. Look at this green candle low. We spiked it today and rallied back to close above that level. That's important development for me because this may be an ABC pattern and maybe we found bottom today, maybe we didn't, but we'll certainly see. But that's telling me that that's bullish behavior in the crude oil market any any spike of a green candle low like that you know a decent green candle not a little tiny one like this but a decent size up candle and a spike of the low but yet we rally back to close above the low of that candle now we have some work to do to get back above the moving averages but that was an important development for me and i think that um until and unless we close back below the low from over here, that low I just mentioned, that green candle low, then I think a low, at least for the short term, is in for crude oil right here, right now. I'm expecting upward mobility in the crude oil market. And this video is getting a little bit long in the tooth, but hopefully it was helpful. So I'm going to give it a wrap here. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.